All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to melt and pour silver using an electric furnace like this one here. The other things that you guys are gonna need in order to do this is going to be a graphite crucible, um, something similar to this. This is a larger size graphite crucible uh, for larger pours. Um, you can also use smaller graphite crucibles like this one uh, if you're gonna be planning on doing smaller pours. Um, I don't commonly use the furnace for smaller pours just because it just doesn't pour well if you're trying to make smaller pieces and in most cases um, I'm just using this to make shot or for quite large pours and by that I mean anything that's usually over four ounces or more um, and maybe multiple pours at a time. Uh, you are going to need some uh, like graphite crucible tongs like these. Uh, I also recommend if you're pouring out of the furnace um, that you get a full face mask for protection. Um, and then of course you're gonna want gloves. Depending on what I'm doing, I'm either gonna use just kind of some standard work gloves like this if I'm gonna pour into just something along the lines of a double-sided mold. Um, or if I'm gonna be making shot um, and I'm pouring into ice and water, I probably am going to wear uh, some welder's gloves that just go a little bit further up the forearm for better protection. So let me get this set up and uh, we'll get started with uh, uh, heating up our silver. Uh, for this video, I think I'm going to just be using some scrap pieces here and then um, I will be pouring into this double-sided mold. I think we'll probably just make like a uh, Millennium Falcon or something along those lines, which is only about three ounces. Normally, again, I'm only going to use this if I'm going to be doing larger pieces or multiple pieces at a time and pouring into the flask. If you're going to make something else, um, like maybe uh, larger bars or something, you could use a, a mold like this one. Uh, would be sufficient again if you're making something uh, with your furnace. Uh, again, if you're making smaller pours and you're pouring in anything smaller, um, I would just recommend using a ceramic crucible um, and torch for something like that. And I have videos on that as well. So let me get this set up and we'll get moving along. All right, so it's a little hard to see, but we have our uh, silver scrap pieces uh, in this uh, graphite crucible here. I want my pour spout lined up uh, when I put this in here so that it is lined up when I'm doing my pour. I'm going to go ahead. We'll just drop this into the electric furnace here. Uh, we'll go ahead and turn this on. And once this kicks up, um, you'll see I have it actually set. So it goes up to that 1150 there. I have it set at... Uh, 1050 that is uh, Celsius silver melts at about 961 62 degrees Celsius and around 1763 degrees um, Fahrenheit so we'll go ahead and uh, let this warm up it does take a while uh, it takes around 20 minutes or so just to kind of get fully heated up to this temperature here. Um, this is the temperature it's currently at. This is what we're aiming for. Um, and we'll see how long it takes to get there. And then it takes uh, roughly like another 20 minutes um, to melt the silver from there. So it's a little bit of a longer process. But uh, we'll get this closed back up. I will also set up my uh, mold next to this. And we will get uh, ready to uh, make that pour. All right, so it's been uh, just over 20 minutes. Actually, it's been about 25 minutes, and you can see where it's 700, and it just turned 14, and now 715 degrees Celsius. So it's warming up pretty quickly at this point, but probably another 10 minutes or so at least until we get to this uh, melting point. So we'll check back in. All right, so the total elapsed time has been just about 40 minutes, I think a little closer to 38 minutes to be more precise. Um, you know, you can just open your lid, take a glance at your silver, whatever your precious metal is. It'll very obviously look like liquid um, when you open that cover and you know you're ready to pour. So let's go ahead, we'll get this open and uh, I'm going to grab this with my uh, tongs. I have my pour spout already angled at the direction that I want to pour, as mentioned before. Uh, and we'll go ahead and pour that right into the double-sided flask mold here. Uh, nice and steady 
drop that back into the furnace. Uh, we'll let that cool down um, and we'll check back in here in just a minute. All right, while we wait for that to cool down, a couple things to note. Number one, um, you don't want to leave that in your furnace, the um, crucible in your furnace, any longer than is necessary because it really will break down those graphite crucibles the longer you leave it in there. And uh, it'll just mean you'll have to buy a new one sooner than later. Um, the other thing is when you are removing that with your tongs, there is a groove around the top lip of the crucible make sure that you get your tongs right in that groove and then also make sure that you get a nice firm grip on that the last thing you need is to drop that on the floor um, if they drop or they get water splashed on them or anything like that they will actually almost explode um, kind of like shattering glass in a way if it's it really hot and it has water touched to it so make sure that you're really careful with that and again that's where the proper um, you know personal you know protection equipment is going to come into place and you're going to want to make sure you have the, the proper equipment for your pores all right we'll give uh, our silver a little bit more time to set here and um, we'll get this open and we'll take out our piece um, we'll dip it in the water that process is known as squelching it's really not necessary. I rarely do it. Um, only if I'm trying to kind of quickly cool the piece down, like in this video to kind of show you guys what our final product is. Um, otherwise I normally just let pieces cool down in the mold, um, long enough to take them out. Even with my bare hands at some, in some cases, um, otherwise you're just going to use some kind of tongs, uh, pliers or something like that to remove your piece, uh, like I'm using here. Um, and, uh, there you can kind of see how that Millennium Falcon came out. We'll go ahead and dip that in the water to cool it down rapidly, clean it off a little bit. I'll show it to you guys again here when it's cleaned off and then also show you the final product once we have it um, all cleaned up and the sprue cut off and all that. Arguably, uh, you could probably find a place outside of the furnace to let your graphite crucible cool down. However, uh, I just have kids that are kind of running in and out of the garage now and then. Um, so the safest place for that to cool down is just keeping it in the furnace, which is what I'm going to do here. Um, otherwise, you know, if you can find a nice concrete area or area surrounded by bricks, something like that um, could be a good place to allow your crucible to cool as well and prevent a little bit more of that breakdown. Um, but once you're really done with that pouring process and your furnace is cooling down, probably relatively minimal as far as any additional breakdown. So uh, here is the kind of cleaned off uh, final piece. Um, I'll uh, cut this sprue off of this. Um, we'll get it cleaned up a little bit more and I will show you guys the final product. All right, so here's a look at the final piece, uh, all cleaned up and with the sprue cut off. I use a Dremel, by the way, with a cutting wheel uh, to cut the uh, sprue off which is just the extra um, silver where the uh, pour spout is. All right, let's go over the key points. Number one, be sure to use a well-ventilated area. Uh, this can give off some noxious gases that you don't want to be breathing in. Number two, be sure to wear the proper protective gear. Uh, number three, don't heat up your silver any longer than is necessary. You don't want to break down that graphite crucible any more than is needed. Um, and number four, be sure that you are pouring slow and steady. If you pour too fast, that silver can come flowing out of there pretty fast. But in any case, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching.